Janine Perret. Hello, welcome to Saturday Live. I'm Janine Perrett and this is going to be the show that livens up your Saturday night and more importantly, we'll keep you up to date on what's happening with that election campaign. Now, we know it hasn't officially been called yet. We're still in what I call the phony war, the phony campaign, but we all know it's about to happen and everybody's on their starting marks. And every week we're going to bring you a segment called So You Want to Be a Politician. Like, who would? We are going to talk to some of the people from the major parties, but also from the minor parties, the little guys that you know we used to ignore, but we are learning to our peril over recent elections we should know more about because they can actually have a very important role. We've got two beauties for you tonight. Now it's time to get to our segment. As I said, we're going to do this every week. Uh, we're going to have a mix of major parties and minor parties. But while we are in the phony campaign, it's a good opportunity to meet some of the myriad of minor parties that are here, tell you about them and meet the candidates. Tonight we've got two excellent ones. We've got Jeff Garland, welcome to the show, from Thanks. the Veterans Party, Thank which we'll find out about in a minute. Thank you very much for joining us. And Ken Stevens, who you might know the name, this name, you're with Derren Hinch's Justice Party. I'm very proudly, Jimmy. Our very colleague proudly. here, at our former colleague, exactly. but he's still on Sky a lot, we all know yeah, that. Yeah, That'll yeah. be interesting. And he will be coming on this segment in a few weeks, but he's busily running around today. So let's start off. Uh, Jeff, the Veterans Party, you're, you're a bit of your background first. You were 16 years in the New South Wales Police Force, or also uh, even a police prosecutor, I understand, at one stage there. You have written a book. I think you've got it there. It's oh, second about PTSD, right. which is one of your uh, issues there. That's right, yes. Um, I'm a retired senior sergeant, served 16 years as police prosecutor. Um, I started writing this book uh, back in 2001 after I jumped into the tray of a, a stolen Union Redfern. Um, and over 13 years, I wrote about my experiences and my recovery and I returned to work. And, and it, I got it published in December last year, sorry, December 2014, just so it can tell us, it gives an insight into the police background and what police confronted with and, and how to confront and, and work through mental health issues, especially in terms of assisting police and their families. Okay, so the question I ask everyone, first up, why did you want to be a politician? I guess for me it was a natural progression because the fact that uh, because of my experience in the police and as a police prosecutor um, and my experiences with my mental health with uh, being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, I've been meeting with politicians in the state government and with the police association and trying to advocate the change for more uh, awareness in, in terms of mental health and support for, for police officers and for, for their families. And I wasn't getting that response. So this opportunity came up where I could actually be an advocate uh, on a federal level because although uh, policing is a state issue, uh, the issues of mental health is a national issue. So if I can sort of be an advocate and be a voice in federal parliament to raise issues about mental health, especially in terms of the military emergency services and the first responders, then that will be a big step because the first thing is you need to actually give them education and an awareness as to what they're going to be confronted with and, and to get that support in all areas. And just sum up the Veterans Party, it includes not just military, it's all emergency services, and I was pleased to see even nurses and doctors. That's right, the Veterans Party is there to support and be a voice in federal parliament for, for the military, for the emergency services, also first responders, so like teachers, nurses, doctors, corrective services, uh, the SES, the VRA, lifeguards and things like that, because they don't naturally have a voice and there's a lot of things that affect them in, in their community and as a result of their employment, and that's why we want to be their, their voice in federal parliament. Okay, now Ken, Darren yes. Hinch's Justice Party, we've talked to Darren about it, we know he is a strong believer in these issues, but tell us a bit about yourself, you've got an interesting background, you started off, you worked for the movie company, United Artists. Yeah, that goes back a long way, um, <laughs> a long, long way, I started off in Australia working for a local cinema group, and then I was hired away by United Artists, which was a major American movie studio, and I went to work for them as their marketing director, and then got the pleasure of working on James Bond films and Rocky films, and and then I started getting transferred around the world, Venezuela, which was a bit of a surprise, and then London, and then I ended up in America, uh, writing movie scripts, which was uh, a bit of a change from where I started. Anything we'd know? No. The great thing about movie scripts is you write them, and you sell them, and you make reasonable money, but nobody ever makes them. Okay, so why do you want to be a politician? Well, look, there's a number of reasons, and we have, um, on the Justice Party uh, website, we have our eight main core policies, but probably the thing that fired me up, I suppose, to answer your question, was a an incident that happened right outside my own home with a sexual pervert who I just happened to look down from the balcony my children were playing on and they were there at the time in a play date. And I saw this guy disrobing and 
starting to uh, pleasure himself. And in a very short time, he was treating his body like an amusement park. So the first thing I did was get on the phone with the police. They couldn't get there, unfortunately, quick enough because they had other commitments. Um, but they were very concerned about it. So I said, fine, I'll go down and confront him. And I think we've got some pictures of this that you're running on your website. We are, down. we are. Yeah. Well, we put together, just quickly on that, we put together a three minute video and we uploaded it last Saturday night, uh, about 8.30 p.m. And it just went viral. It was unbelievable. So when you did this, when did this happen? Oh, this happened last year. So was that the catalyst for you to say, I want to be That was it, yes. Getting back to your question, of course, that was the catalyst. And I decided, right, I really would like to do something about this. And perhaps the best way I can do that is by trying to get into politics, where we can try to make a change with laws. And advocating is great, and there are many wonderful people doing it. But I just felt to get into Parliament in one way or another would be the best thing I could do. So I wrote down all my little things, carried them around in a yellow card in my wallet, kept thinking about it, how am I going to do it? And then one day I saw Darren Hinch announce in the paper that he was going in and all of his policies were the same. Okay, let's talk about policies because you're quite complementary on both your policies, obviously mm. law and order, but justice seems to be the main thing. You're both against domestic violence, for example. Absolutely. To be honest, a lot of the things are motherhood. I guess we're all against domestic violence, I would think. What is it that you offer, Jeff, or what is it that you're looking at that the major parties wouldn't do? I mean, a lot of your platform is lower taxes and looking after people. I mean... Whether they do it well or not, it is actually the platform of most parties, isn't it? It is. That one of the main focuses of our party is, is in terms of mental health, um, suicide prevention, homelessness, employment and healthcare. They are five main uh, policy focus issues. Um, we want to be represented in federal parliament because just because you're a, um, a candidate for a major party doesn't mean you're going to be a good advocate in parliament. So we say that we we want to be a, a representative of federal parliament because of the fact that we're passionate about what, we, what we're doing. Uh, we, as a, as a minor party candidate, it's, it's very difficult uh, to get that support. We don't have the big pockets like the, the major parties do, so anyone who runs as a minor party candidate should be commended just for that point. I'm going to get to the funding issue in a moment. But uh, on this issue, uh, just what Jeff said uh, then about uh, having a voice on specific areas, we saw recently, or we saw in the last election, Ricky Muir, for example, mm. there he was, Motoring enthusiast, enthusiast Party, and it was seen to be too narrow, that you're getting people in who just have really get in there on one thing. Now, he broadened out to other areas. Yeah. But that's a problem some people do have with, not, and I know you're not single issue, but very specific parties. Yeah, I think that's right, Janine, but if, if you look at that, uh, situation with Ricky. Yes, he came in basically as, as a one-issue party and we believe very strongly, we talk about this, one-issue parties don't have a chance. It's just not going to happen. We've got eight core policies, but in, in addition to our eight core policies, which are domestic violence and, and, and trying to do something about these pedophiles wandering the streets, bail reform and, and uh, parole reform have to go hand in hand with that kind of thing. We then also have things like uh, looking after animal rights and also something that nobody wants to talk about that we do, voluntary euthanasia, and we, we can get to that later if, if you've got time. But we believe that you've got to have those things. And coming along your lines, Jeff, I come from a very strong military background. My father was a Royal Marine, my uncle fought Rommel across North Africa. I really want to support the veterans, and I don't think they're supported enough. So that is another issue. And also, to, to top it off, we have another issue, cancer research. None of us know somebody that doesn't have it. We want more money put into cancer research. And of course, Jackie Lambie holds herself up as a minor party person who is fighting for veterans. Why isn't her voice enough for you? Well, she has been a voice for um, veterans uh, over recent times in relation to uh, veteran issues. Uh, we say that we're slightly different to what Jackie is offering because the fact that we say that there's an issue, but let's just try and find a solution. Actually, this, this is an issue. Let's actually provide this practical solution as opposed to saying, um, here's, here's an issue, this person's at fault, let's just get rid of them. We're saying, OK, here's an issue in terms of um, the superannuation issues for, for veterans or mental health. Here's a solution that we can do to actually uh, to confront and, and advocate for change. Jeff mentioned funding. I want to talk yeah. about the challenges you're finding. I know we haven't actually fired the starters gun yet, but you're already uh, campaigning. How hard is it on, on money? I mean, you've got the Darren Hinch uh, visible profile sure. helps, but... But what are you finding the challenges out there for this point? Well, look, you know, you've got to be realistic. When we went into this, Darren and I decided up front, commitment is what we're going into it for. Neither he nor I are interested in the salary, 
the pension. We couldn't care less. And I know that 90% of them down there in Canberra are full of self-interest. Yes, they're good people, don't get me wrong. But that's not our go. So the money issue on one side, what can we get? Not an issue. What do we have to pay? Yes, it's an issue. And Darren often makes the joke that it's being funded by the Darren Hinch Superannuation Fund. Uh, but we've got a policy where every one of our two people in each state have to put their own hands in their own pockets. They have to pay their own nomination fees, their own printing fees. And believe me, I'm doing that too, because you, you've got to do that. But we cannot compete with massively deep pockets. And I made the analogy the other day. I said, I feel like I'm getting into the water looking at three huge nuclear submarines, one green, one Labor, one Liberal coming at me. And I'm in a leaky canoe with a broken oar. That's how you feel. But where you get the, the confidence is, you say, that might be the delivery system, but we've got the policies. And Jeff, are you finding that, that these days people are more open to smaller parties? And I'm assuming funding is the big challenge for you too. Oh, as Ken was saying, funding is a major issue. Look, we don't have the deep pockets um, that they have. Or even the, uh, so what do you do? Is there lots of Lamington drives getting out of the we, we, we do the best we can. Uh, social media is a big platform that we try and do. Um, I mean, I look at the... Um, because I'm running House of Representatives, I look at the candidates I'm running against and they've got 12 volunteers to go on door knocking and, and the train stations and things like that. I'd love to go and knock on the 65,000 doors in my electorate because what... I should say you're running for Joe Bell. Wasn't yeah, that's correct. Here, so. um, I want to find out what's important to them, but because of the fact that without the funding with, to get the flyers and the corporates and stuff, it, it's, it's very difficult. But what we lack in, um, in the funding, we, we have resourcefulness, we have our passion, we have a dedicated team of, um, of members who actually want to actually go out there and be an advocate. And, you can see just by looking at the uh, statistics from the um, 2013 election, over a million people in Australia uh, lodged informal votes, which just reflects their lack of um, support and, and the, 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 the um, level of disillusionment they have in, in our federal government. We've had what, five prime ministers over the last yeah, two elections. We all know that. Now, Jeff, uh, Jeff pointed out, uh, well, there's challenges, obviously, because he's running for uh, a lower house seat, which makes it hard, and you have to get out and specifically um, campaign in the, in the electorate. As a senator, you're running for the Senate. It's a bit broader, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And, uh, it's easier, but, because, but it all depends on where you are. On the, well, the look, it's a big, big area in New South Wales. Darren, as we speak, in fact, is at Nimbin giving a speech at a function there. Uh, he's driven up and uh, he's stopping at little country towns all along the way. Next Saturday night, he and I are both appearing at a, a charity called uh, Christina's House of Hope, which is a refuge being built for women fleeing domestic violence. And uh, we feel that that's something that we but really want to support. But as a senator, you've got a huge electorate. Yeah, but I've got to go there and probably over the next nine weeks, do a lot of driving and go to a lot of places. But just like Jeff, we have to attack social media. So we've gone after that. We've got a great website. We're filling it with information daily. And Can exciting we... videos. And exciting videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the worst thing about running for, for, as a politician that you didn't expect? Well, I, I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't understand quite hard to actually start. Harder than being a policeman? <laughs> um, I think it's different. I mean, as a police, when you had the confidence, you had that support, you had the, the group of people behind you, you know that you knew the laws, you knew that what you could do. As a politician, uh, sorry, as a candidate for a minor party, you basically, you're on your own. You're going through it yourself, you're learning things as you go. Um, and just to get that publicity from the media uh, for the, and, and, the, and the support from the members of the public, the, being the veterans people, the people that we're um, trying to represent, as well as the people of Dobell and the Australia, they're the ones who seem to be the hardest critics in terms of of us trying to support them. So in terms of getting that support as a minor party, um, it's, it's one of the hardest things. So harder than you thought. What about you, Ken? Anything been harder than you imagined? No, actually, uh, we came into it knowing it was going to be impossible. <laughs> but now we're starting to really feel that we've got a serious chance here. There are 3 million people, 13%, who are fed up of left, fed up of right, and they want an alternative. Hey. Clive Palmer didn't help us very much with offering an alternative, <laughs> but we believe that we can offer an alternative. And importantly, because we're talking to everybody about common sense, and everybody that reads our issues sees that they are all common sense, there's nothing political. The emails that we're getting and the Facebook responses that we're getting, I was up till midnight last night just because we answer everybody. But that's our key, social media, it has to be. And no dirty tricks from the major parties yet? Not that they were aware of, no. no. <laughs> okay. We're going to leave it there, gentlemen. Good luck. We'll, uh, we'll keep our viewers posted on how you both fare. Thank Jeff you. Garland, that's the Veterans Party, if you want to look that up online, because they like social media. Ken Stevens, the D Derek Hinch's Justice Party. So, as I said, that's the first of uh, our two candidates for the So You Want to Be a Politician, as I say every time. You wonder why, but they're, they're believers and they have an issue and they must be committed. So we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk arts because it's the weekend. 
And about the federal arts policy, well, there isn't one at the moment. There doesn't seem to be. Why not? Let's get to that soon.